Welcome to an age and an age celebrating 15 years of Star Kid Productions. Here we are. It's been 15 years since we started this company. How's everybody feeling? Is everybody feeling good? Woo! Nice. Oh, hey. Nice. Hey, nice. look at that old nice throwback shirt. Nice. That's oh, wow. a shirt. Studio one. That's great. Yeah. I'm wearing this shirt today. This is, is that the one from the campaign? Oh, prototype. Or is yeah, that one we got some people will get. Um, um Matt, what did, what's yours look no. like? Mine is a hoodie that looks like this. Uh, these are oh. prototypes. Um, the none of them are exactly what the the sweatshirt for the campaign will look like. But we got these sent to basically see like sizing and color and uh, like what they feel like. Um, so nothing's exactly, exactly what we want it to be yet, but we're learning a lot. We found out which ones we want to use. We want to use the, the more expensive ones that are, but they're super comfy. So they're going to cost way more for us to make, but I think it's worth it. Uh, are they soft? Because of, they're very oh, soft. Yeah. What's on the pocket? Oh, yeah. What's on the pocket? All right, Matt. Yeah. We want to see the picture. It's a sir. It's a little sir. Hopalot. Oh yeah. Oh this wow. Little guy. <laughs> yeah. Well. So, a, <laughs> yes, so, um, if you have, uh, so if you have not, um, if you're watching this and you haven't given to the mm -hmm. to the Cinderella's Castle Kickstarter campaign yet, the link is down in the description to this video. You can hop over there. And um, what's the prize tier that we're offering sweatshirts at? Is that it's 150 right 150 yeah. there you go all right and here we go we got we got some we've got a bunch of people here because hello hello hey, hi. Hi. oh okay so uh so today we're going to be um looking back on our on our 15 year history uh kind of talking about um the shows and sharing some memories we're gonna kind of have to go through these shows pretty quickly because we've done so many of them <laughs> at this point and we've got two hours so we that means we've got about eight minutes to talk about each show, sure, show. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh i think we'll we'll just um kind of jump right into who's who's on the stream right now Hi everyone, I'm Nick Lang. Um, I'm one of the writers and directors for the Star Kid shows. Who's at the party house? Uh, I'm I'm John Madison. I uh, live here, and <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here. I'm Kurt Mega. Here I am. Uh, I'm Jeff Lim, and I live here. <laughs> All right, Matt. I live here, but I brought the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm Matt. I'm Matt Lang. I'm a writer on the Star Kid shows. Nice. 
All right, Lauren, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Welcome to my home. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and Joey? I'm Joey. I'm in studio. I'm in studio one. I figured out how to travel through time. Um, wow. I, I got, I, there's a production happening right behind us. We're an hour. We're an hour three of this production. Wow. Wow. Um, it's great. There you go. Um, all right. So it's been 15 years. Who are you? Our, our, uh, who am he I? Said. Oh, you already said yours first? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no worries though. That's okay. Sorry. We're all, we're all. Our memories are going these days, <laughs> um, which is so, a perfect segue. There you go. Uh, but it's been 15 years. Actually, April 9th was the 15th anniversary of when we opened a Very Potter musical, wow. all the way back in 2009. Crazy. And in fact, since we're talking about a Very Potter musical, let's go ahead and. Put a little overlay on. There you go. Little in the corner. <laughs> there, oh, there they wow. are. It's not a video or anything. Just a little wow, thing up in the corner. That. Look at that. Uh, there you go. That was underwhelming. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I thought the whole background was going to change. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> Just a little thing in the corner. It took forever to make them, though. Um, but uh, so uh, <laughs> so it's been 15 years. So here, who who here was in involved in a very Potter musical and what can you remember if anything okay so we've got me wow. Matt, and Joey and Lauren <laughs> Joey and Lauren do you have any favorite memories or anything about a very Potter musical that stand, stands wow. out in your mind this was the first show that that falls under the star kid banner I real really quick I want to talk about some pre star kid things like um uh, there was, we kind of all did, well, I did a production of The Hobbit when I was, um, when I was a sophomore in college, I wrote and directed it. I wasn't supposed to write it, but I did anyway. I broke the rules. Then we did a sequel that was The Hobbit 2, The Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lauren, you played Frodo in, yes. in that one. Um, and then, uh, and then we did Little White Lie. We made that that web series wow. that's also on the star kid channel for some reason um <laughs> uh, Stop it. it's uh <laughs> but it's up on there and uh and lauren you're you're in that one too you're tanya fremont yeah yeah that that was some fun but the first one that really falls in the star kid umbrella is a very potter musical and we did it wow. back in 2009 and um it was something that uh, it was after we had done uh, The Lord of the Rings, we said, of course, the sequel to The Lord of the Rings is Harry Potter. And um, originally, Obviously. Matt and I were going to call it Harry Potter and the Goblet of Music. And it was just going <laughs> yeah. to be based on the fourth show um, because uh, yeah. we actually made it up before the seventh book came out. And then that's um, true. Yeah. And then oh, the seventh God. book came out. We said, "All right, well, we have to yeah. include that." And yeah, the seventh, the seventh book came out, and we read it, and we said, "I don't know if I like Harry Potter anymore. Let's not do the Harry Potter show." Uh, but you know, we we eventually learned to, I wouldn't say love book seven, but tolerate it, and uh, that's why the show pokes quite a bit of fun at, uh, Hello, at the Jamie. seventh book. Hello, All hey, everybody, and, and such. Yeah, so oh, um, so so it changed. Oh, yeah. It oh, then became Harry Potter the musical is what we called yeah. it when we actually did it. Um, and do you uh, have an image of that poster? And, oh, do oh, you? Oh, it's you can. It's lost can, to it's, it's lost somewhere. to time. Yeah, it's uh, lost to time. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's um, yeah, and then the and then the school was breathing down our necks, saying you absolutely cannot call a show a uh, harry potter the musical you don't own the rights to harry potter and you went what and so uh uh no, we, well, we, changed no, it. we had to, they forced us to change it we so we changed it to hp, HP the musical mm. and even yes. that was a little was a little tricky um yeah we eventually we had changed to change it again it okay? HP. yeah HP um, wasn't okay well, when we put it on YouTube, it wasn't okay. When it when it ran at uh, uh, at U of M, 
it was uh, it was HP the musical. And yeah, so this that is sucked the, by. So this is the first show, and since we are talking about an age and an age, we we the very Potter musical kicks off the first age of Stark Kid, which we call the Michigan Age. So mm. this is all the shows that we did at Michigan. So wow. Lauren, Joey, is there anything that stands out in your mind uh, that you, that you remember about a very Potter musical? Okay, Lauren? a lot of it was a blur because <laughs> it was so fast and there was so much to do. And and those those basement shows were always like crazy, but this one was like especially crazy but i do have very vivid memories um of being backstage when the when the voiceover would play at the beginning right yeah. because the voiceover is not in the youtube version right mm -hmm. yeah but is bonnie for, doing bonnie yes, yes. bonnie yeah. Yeah. when it bonnie. has and it has the and it has joe coming out and like doing the whole yes. like yes. killing and trying the baby. to kill the oh, baby we're trying to kill the baby <laughs> yeah we um yes the the uh the show started with a w w what must have been a four minute piece of narration <laughs> it was so yeah. long. Was, yeah. <laughs> it was way too long because because we were like what if people don't know what harry potter is and so we, <laughs> we had to explain it yeah. to people um, yeah. I um, I distinctly well, we were just talking about this the other day, where it's like, it is wild how that show, we had no con. It, it's like how it, it be, and it, this is just the case because it's the first one. How there's no concept of how of like the show for YouTube or the show for like any expectation built around it for Star Kids. So it has yeah. this like interesting thing of like. The memories of it were t were the, like the purest they could be yeah. in terms of like without you know oh it's gonna go it's gonna eventually be for something else which is such a which was such an odd yeah uh, sensation. It was very what was the, uh, whose idea was it to film it and why did you film it? We filmed it uh, for our own sake just so that we could watch it and it was actually a complete and total accident that the entire company started because we were trying to make dvds for people we couldn't make dvds for the whole cast burning dvds is a really annoying process and it especially was back in 2009 so we said forget it let's just put it on youtube and everyone can just watch it on youtube and then a lot more people started watching it on YouTube. The original intention was just the cast would watch it. And uh, so we so we did that. Um, it, it very um, we were but very like, fortunate. Did, we got super lucky. Yeah, everybody was having a great time or it, you, you knew it was a fun show or like it <laughs> was it was at the time, at least for me, it was the most special thing I'd ever seen. It yeah. was, it was, I'd never seen anything like it. It was like a <laughs> magical experience. Everybody nice. was so good in the show and the show, there were, there were hundreds of people in line to come and see this thing. Everybody wanted to see it just based on the post. Totally unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Like totally, totally unexpected. Yeah. yeah I, saw, I, I was in the audience for the, um, yeah, I was there. And James uh, I mean, I just, I obviously knew everyone in the cast, but I remember sitting on that floor and it was a full room. Like the entire thing was packed. It was um, a fire hazard. Oh, it was definitely a fire absolutely. hazard. Absolutely it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, cause you know, back at that time too, also people have to remember too, that there was no, like the only advertising you would do for like basement art shows was you would put posters up around mm -hmm. campus and then hope that like, <laughs> a couple more people other than just your theater school classmates would come um and so the fact that we put up posters, yeah, there's no instagram no, no twitter no, no. There, there was, was no facebook instagram. twitter existed but yeah facebook <laughs> but like, yeah this was before people used twitter in this way yeah. i think it was a business thing at, at first but now it's not even called twitter anymore yes it is yeah. <laughs> but that's tell me one like person me. that calls it X. It was really <laughs> special. It was like really special. That's why I have those vivid memories of like being backstage and stuff because there was 
there was this crazy excitement in the air because no one had ever been, no one had ever done a basement show where just like hundreds of random people showed up and there were and lines we at the that, door. We added yeah. that 11 o'clock show on like a, on Saturday or like we added a second show on Saturday or we added That's a show at one point in the weekend. That's yeah. what I went to. It was yeah. super late. Can I ask yes. a question? What was what was the like reaction from like prof like professors and faculty? Like, were they surprised at the like? Were they like? What was like? Think they were annoyed. I think they were annoyed. Wait, can I say? Um, they most of them were annoyed. John Neville Andrews, who is older, got oh. really upset because he had to sit for too long. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but but our our voice professor Annette, R.I.P. I remember she sent all of us an email and she was like, it was so fun. She was like so <laughs> delighted by it. And I'll never forget that she spelled Draco, D-R-A-K-O. <laughs> Draco. Like, Draco. 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 How many performances were there? There were, I think there were three four, four performances because the, uh, the usual basement show only had three performances. We added an extra performance because so many people wanted to see it. And uh, it should be say it, uh, said that, uh, like, everyone, it was, again, such a mad process to try and get it ready. And by the time we filmed it, Joe Moses had a, had a, he was losing his voice. So in the first Harry Potter show, the Snape voice is different than it is in the later shows because he was losing his voice and um so yeah. it's unbelievable uh, yeah studio yeah. one was also so hard it was a bad place to do musicals because there's no mic system so no one's mic so everyone was screaming over this band <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah and uh and you can't you can't hear anything in the in the in the tape right like, in the video <laughs> yeah let me ruin the, really if worst, anyone yeah. goes back and and watches this video let me ruin the whole thing for you there's a microphone that's picking up everyone's voices right there's only one it's hanging above it and it had the entire time a bump 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 a heart bump heart <laughs> there's a heartbeat a through horrible the heartbeat show. sound and i mean there and, is a heartbeat if you haven't through the entire show and if you haven't noticed it yet if you go back and watch it that will be the only thing you'll be able to hear and it will annoy the ever-living shit out of you you'll never be able to watch it again. um i uh people are asking which show we filmed i actually do not remember uh, Don't which remember, show yeah. we filmed. uh it, it is one. wild that there are more that there are there know, were other like, shows there were other shows and versions of it. Like, like I'm sure there were line differences. There were things. It's like, it's so oh, yeah. wild that that was what was immortalized as yeah. the show. Yeah. I but. really wish that uh, we had different takes because um, there are some mess ups there. Like there's just little things where at one point um, Voldemort says, ah, that's why I hate unbreakable curses instead of unbreakable vows when draco tricks him into the unbreakable vow and um that always bugged me but <laughs> yeah it anyway. was a one take uh, and that was it ruined the show for you all yeah. we ruined the show um yeah. so uh yes yeah, so we did that show it was yes again the most special thing i'd i'd ever witnessed it was i was so remarkably proud of everyone it was it was a wonderful night seeing that open and then watching the run it was very special yeah. and like like you said um we had no expectation that would that it would go anywhere we in for lauren it was like your final performance at the u of m so yeah. it was kind of like a big celebratory goodbye for everybody mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and the show is kind of like this nostalgic look at school and childhood and saying, I love school. And it was <laughs> as everyone was leaving school. I had already left school, so I was feeling I came back to do the show. Mm -hmm. But we um, so, yes, the, there's music in the background right now. This is from uh, Cinderella's Castle, which is what we're uh, raising money to, for right now. So if you haven't backed the Cinderella's Castle kickstarter go check it out and uh and maybe pledge something if you've liked our shows oh. in the past if you like a very potter musical <laughs> and you've never uh given you, give, go give a dollar for a very potter musical 
Hey, do we want to mention any kind of unlockables for this stream? Like what we'll give out if we reach certain yes. numbers? So um, so we're going to go a little easy uh, th this time. We would really love to try and get to our gold budget, which is $375,000. So um, I will see if we make it today. I'm not sure. But um, it would be great to try and do that. But we're we're going to do four unlockables. The first two are going to just be... So on our last stream, we played a lot of the Cinderella's Castle demos. But they were streamed through StreamYard and all this stuff. Uh, our first two unlockables are we're going to put two of those uh, songs up on our YouTube channel as 4K videos. So you can listen to them at your uh, at your leisure um and whenever you like and that's uh so we'll do that and we'll unlock the first one um i'll, I'll put these videos up in the next few days um so the first one let's say when we reach 354 do you want to say Three hundred and fifty-four sure, sounds good. Four. Okay, three fifty-four. And uh, if we reach three fifty-four on the stream, we will go and I will post a four K version of Castle on a Hill up to the Starkid YouTube channel um, for everyone to listen to. Um, okay, so and then, next... and then if we and then we've got some possible then... surprises that we can get to, but. Ooh. Only if we're doing well with fundraising. We've yeah, got let's some... focus on that one first. Okay. Okay. So, so we've Sorry. spent a, a, a lot. Nemo? What's that? Can we just look at Nemo for a second? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's look at him. him. He's, he's just he's... getting up that nose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's get stop. He's being extra annoying. I thought it was because he um, had to eat, so I fed him before the stream. But sometimes he just needs to be snuggled. Yeah. He says, hey, you just can't snuggle. Snuggle. Um, you I have a can't question. Forget me. Yes. Yeah. Um. Can one of the surprises be Lauren plays that piano that's behind yes. her? Yeah. Please. You know, I, I think you that know beautiful grand that beautiful it's grand piano. Oh, completely oh real. my sine way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Play a number. Yeah, I will play the full. I will play. I've been practicing Rhapsody in Blue, Gershwin. Um, great, great, I will great. be playing it all on my Steinway later if we make awesome. $600,000. <laughs> $600,000 to play on Steinway. Right. And there everyone donates to Steinway. Um, we would have to force Lauren to figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, and if we get to so, 700, Lauren will do her architectural digest uh, to her. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, we're so, uh, we're, we're, we're almost, What's sorry, that? sorry, just we're almost halfway through the first hour, and we got we, nine more we, shows. Yeah. So, eight, eight minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, Go. eight minutes each. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so that was the first Harry Potter show. We did it. We put it on YouTube. We started this whole thing by accident. Then when we tried to do our second show, we said, let's try and do the thing that is the furthest away from Harry Potter that we can think of. And we uh, made a show called Me and My Dick. It was for mature audiences only. Um, here we go. Joey is wearing one of the t-shirts from yeah. Me and My Dick. Look uh, at this guy. Joey, yeah. what, uh, what, do you, what do you think about this show? This is the show that... The wow. character is named Joey Richter, so forever he this certainly will be, is. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about this show is also like the concept and a lot of the like music from this show even predates Harry Potter musical. Yeah, because yeah. Because it was in the was... it was in the twenty four hour theater. Oh my competition. god of yeah. the year of yes. two thousand eight or whatever. It was like the wow. yeah. yeah. Yeah, Which that's is wild. Yeah, yeah, that was where I met AJ. Uh -huh. AJ Holmes, yeah. Um, me and my dick has one of the catchiest songs I've ever uh, heard. I listen, I I sing it sometimes by myself. What uh, song? Ready, ready to go. Love I, that song. Great song. Ready to go. I love the ten anniversary, like uh, the the homecoming concert version where we all are singing, and it was great. So, yeah. It's a great, it's great, song. it's a great tune. Um, yeah, I, I, I love that show. Uh, you know, that's a show where I certainly wish I, uh, I 
wasn't in college when I did it and had the college schedule of staying up super late and doing a show and sounding like shit um, <laughs> on the album, you know? Um, and Darren has made sure to remind me of that multiple times when he's been going back through music and been like, man, you sounded like shit on this. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. aware. Uh, I, think, I so, think you sound endearing and sweet. I really oh, like I sound it. like a young boy, which is pretty good. I sound like a young boy who's going through <laughs> puberty. Um, but no, that's a really, it's a really fun, it's a really fun special show. Also, like, I remember, because yeah, at the time, Joe was not in school anymore. Joe had already graduated. So I remember Joe came back and stayed in my apartment and we were like little roommates for like a, a couple of weeks while we did the show too. And it was like, I, it was really, it was really fun. It was also during that fire when Pinball Pete's almost burned down. So that was real or did burn down, which was a wild Ann Arbor memory. Um, but no, that was, that was such a blast. It was such a fun. Also, Brian, I mean, Brian wasn't in, in school. Brian was mm -hmm. yeah. two years out from being in school oh, yeah. and came back and did that show. But yes. um, we were breaking rules all over the place. Breaking rules, putting yeah. people in shows that shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Um, no, it was, yeah. it, that was super, super fun. What about you guys? Um, yeah, no, it was, it was fun. It was a fun time. Uh, yeah, I was living, you know, again, I was living in LA for, for a lot of this stuff. And then I would come back for these shows. Um, and they happened really quickly, but they were really fun. Um, I think we're going to kind of blow past this one a little bit. If okay, okay. Well, I just found myself back in the yeah. theater and there it is. <laughs> Um, because um, I think we want to try and catch up some of this lost time that we have, but it was a sure. great fun time. And a thing that is uh, significant about this show is that it was the first student produced album to ever make it to the billboard charts. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there cool. you go. Uh, you betcha. Music by, uh, by Darren, by AJ Holmes, and Carlos Valdez, who is who's gone on to be wildly successful, oh, and yeah. um, and we love it. There you go. That uh, they're all great and talented. So we did that show, and then um, we went into doing our our third show, uh, which is the final show in the in the Michigan era, which was a Very Potter sequel. Um, where we said, okay, the first one was a hit. Let's do let's do a sequel to it. Um, we actually came we, up with the title "Very Potter Sequel" before we came up with a Very Potter musical. When we were trying to rename the show because we had to rename it when we put it on YouTube, and uh, we said, well, if there was a sequel, it'd be called a Very Potter music, a, a Very Potter sequel, like a Very Brady sequel. And then mm -hmm. we said, okay, so let's call the first one a Very Potter musical, and then we'll do a second one. Call it a yeah. Very this musical. this show was was also an accident. We <laughs> never we never wanted to do a sequel to the Harry Potter show because obviously it's a terrible idea because they because we fit the whole story into the first one and they beat Voldemort <laughs> at the end. But it was <laughs> Leaky Leaky Khan asked us, "Hey, could you do like a?" like a what happened after the first show like 10 minutes or something on on their stage at leaky con and just so, do 10 minutes yeah so so i think somebody nick or brian said yeah we'll do that and then it was like okay we're gonna do something that takes place after and so very quickly me and nick said okay it's a, it's a sequel now <laughs> and um we had a lot of it was very challenging to come up with how to do it. We had a lot of bad ideas. Yeah. Uh, the, we yeah, ended up accident. We ended up our first version accidentally is, is I don't know anything about Harry Potter and the cursed child, but as far as I understand it, we accidentally made up this? basically the plot of that. But then <laughs> yeah, we the said, child. no. And we threw that out yeah, we and said, we this decided is, to, we don't like this. Yeah. But yeah, we, and so the we, climax of cursed child from what I understand, I have not seen the show spoiler alert harry goes they go back in time to the night that harry's parents die and harry has to like let voldemort go in and kill his parents or something and that was the original ending of a very potter sequel 
Um, and yeah. we, we eventually said, this is a bummer. It's... Isn't this supposed to be a comedy? So we, yeah. um, we threw out our entire idea. This yeah. show is so much fun. So fun. Yeah. yeah, we we as we were trying to come up with the story, we were having a really hard time. We eventually said, can't we just jump back to Harry's first year and just do Harry's first year? Because a little tiny joke in the first Harry Potter show is that Harry is 12. So it takes place in his second year. So we said, well, let's go back and do the first year. So it actually is kind of more of a prequel. But it is a sequel because the bad guys go back in time and also Draco goes back in time. So it's a prequel for Harry and, and Ron, a sequel for Draco. This, Dra this is where Draco has the earring, right? Because yeah. he's older and cooler. Yeah. Yeah. James, is that how you, you No one confirmed it? Yeah. yeah. That, was that your first thing? Yeah, that was my first Tarkin and, show. Was, yes. Oh, this, yeah. James yeah. came on to the team. James, what do you remember about... about so for those of you that don't know, James was the choreographer on a Very Potter sequel. So James, what can you tell us about that show? The one thing that always sticks with me is that I gave Julia Alvin uh, shin splints and she'll never let me forget it. <laughs> uh, but but uh, I remember, um, yeah, I was, I was just approached through an email um, from Amalia and she was like, hey, did you want to be choreograph this next Star Kid show? Uh, and I was like, oh my God, absolutely, I'd love to. Um, and so it was, it felt like summer camp, you know, we were, we were just all in, uh, either the, um, the studio one or we were in the, um, the Telsey, uh, or what's it, what's the name? What's the other studio we were in down the hall? It doesn't matter. What was it um, studio two? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, um, we the large classroom. The large classroom. Was, we had large yeah. classroom. So we were like in different rooms, just trying to like piece this all together. And, um, and it was just kind of slapdash because I remember. Darren, I would ask him like, "Hey, Darren, like, can I get some music so I can choreograph?" And he wouldn't have it done. So, I, so what would happen is I'd get an email from him at like 6 p.m. and then I'd have to stage the number the next day. Yeah. And and, and so it was just oh oh someone got it the Towsley there it is someone had Towsley Towsley that's the someone one someone used the internet someone Thank used the you. internet. And, um, and yeah, so I, so I remember it was a little hectic because I just had to like throw these numbers on their feet really fast, but everyone was just so game and ready to try and just do anything. And that it, it just became fun. And so each day we just added a layer and then it, and then it became, Hey, can we add a dance break with the brooms for the Quidditch match? And Hey, can we add a really fun, sassy number for Joe during stutter? You know, like everything just kind of built on itself. And it really was, I, I could have asked for a better first experience working with the company. It was amazing. And we were, we, school was out. Like this was during yeah. the spring it, it semester. Really so like, like camp. it yeah. was camp. Yeah. We, Cause yeah, we went for like two weeks and we were working on the show every day, all day for like two weeks. Yeah. It that was, was cool. like camp. It was something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, again, it was James, you did such a good job on that show. You were fantastic. And uh, and everybody, those dances are hard, like <laughs> the Quidditch dance and the Days of Summer dance when they kick each other's feet. And Harry freaking oh, yeah! Potter and all that. Yep, yep. There's a lot of and you know and the stutter dance and everybody had to do yeah. the stutter dance in those black in the hoods so that yep. they, yes. they couldn't see anything. It I was, can't uh, stop dancing, y'all. <laughs> just the thing it. we're about we said it was camp just the thing we're about five hundred dollars away from unlocking uh castle on the hill the 4K. demo 4k version it'll just go up on youtube so you can listen to it whenever you want however many times you want so just so, a status update on that one Yes, nice. and and if you're and if you're listening to these stories and you go, oh, I remember a Harry Potter sequel. That was such a here's that, a dollar. Here's one dollar. Here's a dollar. Here's a dollar. I love that. Here's a dollar. To you. Um, and they still yeah. try to cram it in your computer like an ATM. Yeah. Um. So we um, uh. So we did a Harry Potter sequel. It was um. It was a lot of fun. It was certainly. It was stressful trying to uh make a sequel to the first one because we said the first one was successful we don't want to um you know kill this thing that we stumbled upon so 
we really, really tried hard to um, to have it rock. Li live up to the to the hype. And um, you know what was my favorite costume of that whole trail that I think about every time I think about it, I forget about it. It's I know Jim's what you're gonna say costume. Yes, <laughs> the friends costume. Because do you remember Nick? I feel like you and I have talked about this before, but how. At first, he had a huge, a big horse. Someone butt. had made it was a bigger, huge, and it was like too big. It kept pulling his pants down. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you, whose idea was it to be like, let's just put the tiny little butt on him? It's, I don't it's remember whose idea it was, but it is but, the most inspired choice I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It, it was. Jim is so big. And then it's just this little tiny ass. Just uh, it was like the it was the little like um it was the little like uh it was the per, is Perseus. It was like a Perseus plush doll from the Hercules animated movie, like Pegasus. 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 Perseus. 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 Oh, no. uh, we crossed uh, the the three fifty four. Uh, so we will be posting Castle on a Hill, um, four K to the YouTube channel for everyone to enjoy. Thank you so much for helping us hit that yeah. little one. And now let's do at maybe a uh, three fifty six five hundred. Ooh, with the five hundred. Really? Do you think three fifty six? How about just three fifty six? We'll post okay. curse crazy four k. We'll do a four k curse crazy. And we should also probably move on to the next show <laughs> and give it like a minute and then move on to the next show because we got twenty minutes left. Um, but oh, wow. so at, at the at the end of uh, at the end of a Harry Potter sequel, we then left Michigan um, uh, uh, and we go into our next age that those are the, those first three th those that was the michigan age and there's a purity to those shows there there's a simplicity to them and kind of a you know we were very young sorts of things and no it's it's an hour and 20 minutes but what matt means is that uh we have 20 minutes left to talk about a lot of the shows because we wanted to move we wanted to get to hatchetfield stuff as soon as we uh, could, well, because, it's how yeah. I get how I how we scheduled people on the stream. I guess I thought that an hour would be way more time. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah. So for ten um, years, though, that's like so, an hour for ten years. <laughs> yeah. So how I scheduled it was the second hour had like. First off, there's just not that many people that I had to to invite to talk about the first to talk about the uh, the first shows. So. It was just you guys, and then, but we've got the whole Hatchetfield yeah, no. cast. Like everybody's been in the Hatchetfield cast, so I had like the whole second half of the stream to talk Hatchetfield. Great. Well, here we go. So let's uh, go. move on. After after a very Potter sequel, we all move. Uh, uh, well, many of us moved to Chicago, and where we did our first <laughs> Chicago show. And so, w the first show of the next age that we are calling the Halstead Age. Because mm. we did oh, so yes. many of these shows at Center on Halstead, and it was Starship, of course. Yeah. Our, oh, our I'm show, in the center on um, Halstead. <laughs> there there you are. There? You're in the center, um, and there? we uh, <laughs> we we kind of flew real close to the sun this time, <laughs> where we uh, oh yeah, he <laughs> said we can do anything, and we made so <laughs> many puppets and. <laughs> all, all this stuff and we and we really did not sleep for many months and it was very <laughs> it was it was difficult but you know we did it you did yeah. it and so uh, um wow does this anyone have any memories to... about starship oh yeah oh yeah go Matt. i have i have a very strong pervasive memory of the entire house covered in that pink insulation foam yes. absolutely mm -hmm. everywhere on every surface and we were cutting it 100% with a hot knife poisonous. we didn't know it's fiberglass we were all breathing in breathing yeah. it right in oh. no no windows open going <coughs> yes, we lived just in a shaving basement. years yeah. off of our lives <laughs> yeah. and it was I everywhere I remember watching you cut through that and coughing, going like, "You should put a mask on or something. Cover your mouth." And you're like, "No, it's fine." 
Yeah, it's just smoke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. I didn't get it and it was it was hellish for like a month. It was living in dust and flakes of insulation foam just absolutely mm-hmm. everywhere. Cuz cuz if uh, you've seen the show, you'll remember there are these giant kind of 2D bugs that we carved out of pink insulation foam and it was uh and we tried we so 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 hard on them only for then it to be reviewed and the show to be called knowingly amateurish looking <laughs> yeah 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 we, said, <laughs> we tried so hard on those bugs yeah, knowingly knowingly amateurish. Amateurish. yeah we got a review so this was our first show that we got a, a real review in a in a newspaper in chicago and they said it was um they they said that the score was skimpy and lyrically uninspired Completely uninspired yeah um, <laughs> yeah they, we still remember that and they uh-huh. and there was a and they were talking about how long it was and there was a quote that went snip snip team star kid and uh <laughs> and they uh i mean listen they, it was a long show it was a they were really right. long they were 100 percent right they were 100 we, we it was the best thing that ever happened to us because they were right about everything it was a three-hour show and it had eight songs in it it was um <laughs> not, not, yeah. not, oh not our best um and uh, i i yeah. think i even wrote i i wrote that on i think we made a dvd and certainly in the rough draft of the dvd i put on the back uh, the score is skimpy and lyrically uninspired. <laughs> uh, I think I think we changed it, but it was certainly pretty funny. Oh yeah. my god! Um, yeah. God. So yeah. And, and we got and and that show got put onto that person who wrote that article uh, or that review put it on their list of the worst musicals in Chicago. That year. Oh the my god! Wow, that's oh, a little. That's a little right. Much. <laughs> but we got best musical from broadwayworld.com because uh, you know the the star kid community they all went and voted for it so we so Hell yeah. there you go um, i was gonna say I, this yeah. is my my intro to star kid was darren was writing these demos uh on the set of glee and we were sitting waiting for a take and darren was like yeah i'm writing these demos you want to come listen to them and so i went to his trailer and he played me uh beauty He's like, yeah, my friend Joey's gonna sing this. That was like my first introduction to what Star Kid was. So, oh yes. wow, yes, this show <laughs> was is significant. Like, that they the, were, yeah, you guys were mad at him for not writing the music, not having it. Done. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this was this Darius, was a show yeah. that we were very stressed out the entire time, and we uh, and Darren was supposed to write 15 songs for the show, but then oh. he got cast on Glee, and yeah. Darren uh, then he, he called. And he called me when I was uh, driving to Ikea with Brian Holden. And he was like, oh, dude, I got great news. I just can't, got cast on Glee. And then, it, and Brian and I were both so mad at him. Because we were like, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got these songs done. <laughs> we, we, and we ended up getting like, half of you. the songs. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then tell the story about when Darren showed up to rehearsal. Oh, this is one of my fondest memories. It was everybody was so pissed this. off, so mad, so angry, and and every day we'd go into rehearsal and everybody would say, "So where are the songs? So where are the songs? Where are the songs? I'm supposed to learn a song. I have to be able to learn the song. I can't learn it in a day." And so we have everybody to do the show. was so angry. Everybody was so mad, absolutely fucking furious. And so we were doing our sing through. And everyone was so embarrassed, and they're going, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. There's only eight songs. We don't have half of the score, uh, but let's just sing through what we have. And everybody went, fine, sure. And they were singing through it. They were singing through it. And then as they were singing through it, we were singing, we were singing Beauty. And then through the door of the rehearsal, Darren pops in as a surprise to surprise the cast. He flew in. To rehearse the songs with everybody, and he and he knocked into the door and said, "Beauty everywhere, singing." <laughs> and he thought everyone was going to go, "Darren," and run over to him. I'm sure that's how it was going to work in his mind. Everybody turned to him, just furious, <laughs> so pissed off. The room was silent, <laughs> and and he went, "Hey guys," and we said, 
so where are the rest of those songs? <laughs> and, he said, and he said, oh, dude, I, oh, I, I'm, I'm working. On, oh, I should get to work. Okay. And he went and he, and he sat down and it was, uh, it was, it was certainly something. It was a time. God. That was also so, during the snow. I will snow never apocalypse. forget that. Yeah. That, yes. We also did this during the snow apocalypse. He was yes. working on yeah. it. I, I will vouch for that. He he was no no Darren. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's not. He wrote again, the songs. It's not there are songs in the show. Darren should not have been working on the show. He was he was on the biggest television show in, in the world. He, he, it's like, how could he do it? It was, he was working so hard, trying his very best. And he wrote some beautiful songs for that show. It was just never again. Did we, did we, well, we still did this. We don't do this anymore where we announce when a show is happening before it's done before mm. the whole yeah. thing is written. So this was, it was not fair to Darren. So, um, so Darren, but in spite of everything, Darren did a wonderful job on the songs that he wrote and that, and, uh, I think, you know, I want to be a Starship Ranger. Come on. Great song. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Pick it up song. notch. It was awesome. That song. Um, that it's hideous of, creatures. Yeah. That is quo. Cool. That's a great one. <laughs> that is cool. That there was great such stuff. a fun show to do, though. Yeah, that was so fun. We, was... And we learned a lot. That was like our first foray into real professional producing. And wasn't that like things. a Billboard top ten too? Am I crazy? Like in the musical thing, wasn't that? It, I one? don't. I don't know. Let me look it up. It was I think also it's like Black yeah. Friday, Nerdy Prudes, and uh, uh, Starship. I think all hit the like top ten. Uh, on soundtracks. Oh, I think that was yes. the first one. Kick it, I yes, I it up a it. notch. Kick yeah. it yeah. up a notch. Well, like, kick it up a notch is song. phenomenal. What a villain song. What yeah, a it's a great song. I'm like, villain. I'll never forget that pincer puppet too, Nick. Do you remember? You and I were like fully inside the pincer puppet backstage trying to put those fucking legs on it. And it took yeah. so long. <laughs> and then we finally got them all on and we realized we couldn't even get through the door to get on yeah. stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren and I had picked up this pincer puppet, went, okay, let's take it. And it, and it went, and we hit the sides <laughs> of the door because the legs were so long. We eventually <laughs> just cut the legs and said, yeah. forget yeah. the leg. We, he's he's got no just leg. a floating scorpion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you hear what time. happened? Did you hear what happened to Pinsir? Yeah. I cleaned out the storage unit and I took his entire giant body and threw it into a dumpster. Matt! <laughs> Where was I going to stick him? <laughs> On the top of the car. So he was this giant yeah. scorpion in a dumpster in Chicago. It was a very yeah. sad sight, but, the, but, but uh, that's where right? I, I took his head. And yeah. and left okay. his his, sev yeah. his the rest of his body in a dumpster you should, in LA. You should or mount your head on the wall like a like a like a like a like a, yeah. like, game, like a big game hunt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that'd be um, great. Wow. I have a question for Lauren and Joey. I know that I we only schedule you for an hour. Do you could you stay longer, or do you guys have something to do? Yeah, I yeah I can stay a little. Long. I don't know if I can stay the full two hours, but I can stay a little longer. Okay. Let's cool. see what I happens. Did. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so anyway, we did Starship. Like you said, Lauren, it was kind of our first foray into really the a world where people were, we were having to deal with some, some real uh, consequences to what we were doing. And we were getting reviewed and we were getting feedback from grownups now. And uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, so it was something, and I think, yes, we learned a lot on that show. But we were um, pretty scarred from doing all of those pink insulation bugs and all these puppets. And it, it was such an ambitious show. And yeah. Really, we did it because we were, again, so green. We had, we had no idea what we were doing. So we really shot for the stars with that one and uh we landed yeah. somewhere so there you go yeah thanks for let thanks for letting me do it guys because i was still in school yeah so i was traveling to oh, yeah. and from michigan 
for like a month yeah. to, to rehearse. Oh, it yeah. was nuts. I remember. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh God, what? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it was it's, I just remember this. Oh, it's like you think that you forget the stress, but you poke it and it comes right comes back. Right I go, back. yeah, oh, uh-huh. yeah. You go oh right yeah, because it was all like <laughs> Megabus and Megabus and and, uh, and what you call it, uh, Amtrak contingent. Amtrak. It was like, yeah, I it was, it was a wild Amtrak's time. Amtrak's Megabuses, yeah, I remember yep. that. Thanks. Um, yeah. No so, uh, so Thank we you. did start Starship, and it was our first show at the Center in Halstead. Uh, like you said, Joey, we did it during the snow apocalypse. That was really something wow. because to get to the theater. We had to walk through a blizzard, like feet of snow, to go in and do the show, and it, it was really something. Um, then uh, after that show, we actually had the first Starka tour. We will mention this yeah. briefly, but uh, after that was the first Starka tour, which was the space tour. Um, we don't really have too much time to talk about it, but I just wanted to mention that it happened. And then we went into... Time. And then we went to our second show in the Halstead era age, which was Holy Musical Batman. Um, So, yeah, yeah, Holy Musical Batman. So this one is interesting because, Joey, do you remember this? That uh, (laughs) Holy Musical Batman was when we did the Harry Potter show and we were leaving when people were graduating. It was a Michigan. We said, all right, well, the next show, Joey, you will do. And because you have to carry on the tradition and you will do Holy Musical Batman. Matt, I remember talking about this with you on our porch that year that we had, like the summer after we did, I think very Potter musical or maybe something, or maybe coming up to your apartment after like the me and my dick year, but talking about this, cause there was like, I remember at one point there was an idea. Oh no, this wouldn't have made sense because he wasn't even there that Lee Chrisman was Bruce yes. you had an idea of Lee Christman as Bruce Wayne? Maybe. I don't know. I, I can't yeah. remember. And that and then and then AJ as the Joker when the Joker was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had a, there was some idea we... of AJ as the Joker playing piano. And I will yeah. I right. like, like singing his own music, which I was like perfect idea. Um yes. but that's all I really remember of it. Yeah. yeah. Um so there you go. Holy Musical Batman. We went into doing it. This what a is show. The, the first show that we did with Nick Gage. Um, uh, Scott was, Lamp. Uh, Nick Gage and Scott yeah. Lamp, uh, who did the music for that show, and they did a fantastic job. Holy Musical Batman was a lot of fun to do. Um, I think June did such a good job on the costumes oh for that oh, show. Good. They're really fun. When we were writing the show, um, you know, there's Matt Jeff's I, show too. This is Jeff's yeah. the first appearance of first show. Lemons. Oh yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Jeff and was so, sweet tooth. Yeah. Jeff was yeah. sweet tooth. And when we were so when we wrote the show, we were going like, okay, we're trying to write a funny Batman. What are we gonna do about the Joker? Because the Joker is already a funny character. We didn't want to write accidentally write a less funny Joker because there have been so many funny jokers. Eventually we decided you know what, let's just not even have the Joker in it and let's do a version of the Joker. And we were part of the gag is that we made up all of these bad guys, all these villains, you know, all these kind of made up Batman villains. And our favorite one was Sweet Tooth, who was a guy who killed people with candy. And we wrote the show thinking that we made up Sweet Tooth. Then we found out uh, later that Sweet Tooth actually is a Batman villain. There is a Batman villain named Sweet Tooth from an obscure, really? uh, like, old cartoon show, and he was a and he was a guy who wore like a pink sweatsuit and a sailor hat, and it was the same kind of thing. He had evil candy. Um, so Sweet Tooth actually was a character we had no idea when we were writing the show. Um, so wow. Uh, uh, so Jeff came in. And we were like, who's going to play Sweet Tooth? You know, we were having a little bit of trouble. And then luckily Jeff came in and auditioned for the show. And we said, obviously, it's got to be this guy. Jeff. Um, Fantastic. Jeff did so 
so good in the show. Jeff, do you have any um, memories about Poland Musical Batman? Oh yeah, I loved it. Uh, so I just moved to Chicago from New York. I was, I'd stopped auditioning in New York because I was just writing my musical. And so I moved back home to Chicago and I met up with Chris Allen and uh, you guys, I saw you guys again and you just were having to do the show. And Chris was really pulling me for an audition for it. I was like, fine, man, you need a maniac. I can do a maniac. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but what I did, my first impression was, because also I left New York because I was disenfranchised with Broadway. I thought Broadway sucked. Yeah. yeah. And what my impressions, of, <laughs> seriously, my impressions yeah, of the show was, this is the funniest script I've ever read. And it is the catchiest music I've ever heard. Two yeah. things I want in a musical. I was like, this is everything I want Broadway to be. And it's not. And so I love, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yes. Wow. You, you, were, you were so good. Yes, Lauren? Sorry. Yes, I agree. You're so good. And also, I think what was what was so nice about Holy Musical Batman was it was such a fun show and the music was so great. But I think the fact that it came after Starship, you can really see the effects of the Starship experience on Holy Musical Batman because like it was pared way down. It was way tighter. It, there were like way less elements to the show. Like it was much simpler, but everything was done a little bit like everything there was a little more we could put more effort into the little things because there, it wasn't so overwhelming and there was like a full score it just felt like you can really see what the lessons were from one show to the next which it, is great exactly lauren do you remember um, when you were commissioner gordon and you would say <laughs> a different thing every night when you would turn back to the to the citizens of gotham and i think yeah. you 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 would say something you were giving a speech to the citizens of gotham and you would say when i wrote huckleberry finn and <laughs> do you remember that because you were like i look like mark twain do you remember that wait but would i would i say huckleberry finn every night no you said something different every something night different. i don't yeah. i don't oh, remember I what they were though yeah Shit, i wish i remembered also That's my funny, favorite though. My favorite joke is the rat a tat tat. Rat a tat tat. Who does that? Who does that? That's one? Just, everyone that's on the ground is part of the Yeah, oh, they he's say, so hey, he's got a super, he's got a jet fighter. Let's shoot it down with these vintage Tommy guns. Rat a tat tat tat. Rat a tat tat. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Just a just a heads up. We're at three fifty four and seven hundred, so we're still. 1300 away from our goal of 356 in which we're going to release the 4k version of cursed crazy are we Ooh. still pushing for three 356 right yes let's yeah. it. i think yeah. we can do it if you're watching those, this stream you can... captions are gonna look so good in 4k <laughs> <laughs> it's be beautiful if um is that mariah yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, we're getting to. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> we should probably move on to the next show, but before we do, I just want to say the pro the best joke that I ever wrote and will ever write is in Batman, and I didn't even write it consciously. I was we were doing puns, we were making up puns for this whole show, and I was sleeping, and in my <laughs> dreams, I was dreaming about the show, and Batman said calendar man your days are numbered and, <laughs> and when my when my unconscious brain heard that it forced me awake and i went <laughs> and picked up the phone and immediately called nick and he and he said hello and i said calendar man your days are numbered and i said don't he forget that room. don't forget that and well he was in la and i said don't forget LA. that oh that's the best joke i'll yeah. ever come up with because <laughs> calendars have numbered days and i was so proud of it <laughs> so proud of it and then in the live Good. show it got a polite chuckle and it was blown, isn't that blown just right the way, though yeah, yeah. That, isn't that just There's the way? There's a joke that's, in every it, show it, where it's like, it's, what, it was the flying machine. Yeah, it, it was that's what machine. we used to call it because we always thought that the funniest joke in the first Harry Potter was 
prepare my flying machine. And it, it never got a laugh. Never no got a laugh. Because <laughs> um, so it's we, like, what's a would, flying machine? Yeah. He's a wizard. Yeah, he he go, yeah, Voldemort, it just was funny that Voldemort had a flying machine. To fly, <laughs> had like a little bicycle with <laughs> wings that he went. <laughs> yes. Harry Potter. Um, yes. And so I, we would say, what's going to be the flying machine this time? Yep. And yeah. you know, that one, it was calendar man. Your days are numbered. Um, got some, it maybe got a, it got a few chuckles, like three or four. Yep. But go. I'll never but do anything. Are the intellectuals? <laughs> yeah, it was the start of a joke. It uh, went over the ahead of its head. time. So, um, yeah. it was. So we had a lot of fun doing Holy Musical Batman. After that, came the second Star Kid tour, which was Apocalypse tour, and then uh, the same year, mere months later, we did our third Harry Potter show. And um, oh this God. was, we were flying. And our third Harry Potter show is really something where uh, after we did the second Harry Potter show, we said, all right, we're done with Harry Potter. We'll never do it again. We've done absolutely everything you could possibly do. But then we, you know, we started making up this third one. We were like, there's still some stuff in the books that we didn't use. <laughs> and uh, then, um, and uh, I remember Matt making up when Harry uh, is at Godric's Hollow and he and he talks to his to his and everything was wrong and everything was terrible and then Matt made up that he was gonna reprise going back to Hogwarts and it was so it made everybody cry and we said all right you got to do this you got to try and at least try to do the show. And it was a it nightmare to pull together. It was abs an absolute nightmare. Oh, hey. Yes, oh, Joey Schultz, oh, he's oh, there oh, right oh. now. I'm at yeah. LeakyCon 2012 in Chicago. Oh, my God. Hey, Nick, could we change that? Uh, could we get a nice little overlay? There wow, you go. look at oh, that. There it is. Harry Potter yeah, senior yeah. year. So, yeah, yeah this one was, was actually not was a real a show. It was a stage greeting. Yeah. Sure. You can tell. Yeah. There's a little... Uh, there's a little uh, a script as a steering wheel right there. Um, yeah. Yeah, what a while. This was like two or three. It might have just been two 12-hour days. Yes. It, it was, was terrible. It was, yeah. two, it was two days of rehearsal. It was, uh, uh, it was not it was enough wild. time. The show itself ran about five hours. It was five. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. It was way <laughs> too long. I was there. I was there. I was, there. I was, in, the, I was in the third row watching it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there well, you go. But it's, it's like, to to how, how would we have known? We never like ran through it. That's so true. it's like yeah. we didn't know how long it was going to be until That's we were so in it. And we were like, this Wait, is long. How many yeah. songs were in that show? Two. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, every, I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, senior year. There were some Gilderoy. great songs. In that one. Oh, yeah. yeah the Gilderoy get, song is really good. Get my Always mouth, dance. dance. Get, yeah, Get My Mouth, which Jeff sang. Get My Mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Get my mouth great song. Uh, uh, the School is Mine. The school I Was Harry mine. Potter. I, oh, um, I Was Harry Potter. Sidekick. Sidekick is a great song. Great song. It turned out to be like a full, almost a full Musical, yeah. yeah. Wow. Hello, Brian. Oh, oh. hello. Hi, oh. Bryce. How are you? I'm good. How's everybody doing? We're doing good. We're talking about a very Potter senior year. We're trying to. Oh, get we're a little through. behind schedule. Yeah. Bryce, so we're seen, gonna try and blow through. Did you watch all five hours these. of it? Yeah. Huh? So, um, Have you seen all five hours of Harry Potter Senior Year? Yes, I have. Yes. Um, okay, cool. Guys, come on. No, no one now on. can, unless you were in the live oh, show, yeah. you can't see it because I cut, I cut like what two hours was, out of the show when we start. put did it Did you under. really? Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what two hours did you cut? I can't remember. I couldn't, couldn't tell you. <laughs> Um, but he cut two hour, uh, one hour off the very beginning and one hour off the very end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, just it's just the middle. middle. Yeah. It's just the middle. Just the middle bits. Um, <laughs> wow, but, that was you know, special, though. It was. It was special. It was. Um, it was wild. We was had me. Darren for two hours before the show started, yeah. which, as yeah. you know, was less than half the runtime of yeah, the actual that's show. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, it, it yes, was, you can see you can see Darren as he's reading the script. It's the first time he read it. So he'd go, oh, what's happening? 
So it was kind of just being discovered in real time. time. It, it was yeah. just being moved there around. There were certain things with like some of the stage directions that Darren had not read, but Darren, yeah. did, Darren did read. You know, he came when he came to do the rehearsal. He is the one who came up to me and said, "Nick, at at the end of the show, I want to say." in the in the very last going back to hogwarts reprise when he's singing to his son he's the one that said that he wanted to say i hope you find that swimming pool oh. and so, yeah that was his idea yeah. that's it, it really was, it was very that was sweet. a very emotional it was, day it was very that was emotional. Like an incredibly emotional day yes i think it was also like everyone was so sleep deprived and crazed from the process yeah. and then also it was an incredibly emotional like final kind of cl chapter closing all that together i remember being a fucking wreck after that show i had a single yeah. banana i thought i was going <laughs> i thought I, I like i had i ate a single banana that day and thought i was like in the middle of sidekick was like i i'm losing my vision wait did we also have we talked about how because of the, the mics theme? because there were so many people that they couldn't turn on and off our mics when we would be off stage. So as a rule for five hours, no one was allowed to like talk, eat, or pee when they were well, off. Well, you were allowed to. You just knew it was going. Well, it was just going to be yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we heard did. a few well, people. Yeah, we heard yeah, some go. people going to yeah. the bathroom during the live show. And yeah, wow. thing, so in that show, this is a little behind the scenes thing. In that show, we had. Uh, something like 30 actors that were in the show and we had to mic every single one of them and when we were going to do that the union the hotel union that was running tech for the leaky con that because we did the show at a leaky con that was in chicago in a hotel we did this in a massive uh uh conference room for four thousand people were watching it that's and crazy and uh wow. it was they like were moving people into other rooms yeah like, and there were there was a separate room rooms. that was watching a live feed of it yeah. at, at the same time it was <laughs> it was wild but the union uh they said we're not going to um prepare all these microphones for you uh you're you're not uh, we're not going to do that for you and then we said okay well can we prepare them ourselves and they said if you are going to touch the microphones during the show, you have to pay the union eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> and so we so we had to pay the Chicago Hotel Workers Union eleven thousand dollars so that we could use our own microphones during that show. Uh, the yeah, microphones well. that we brought in. And wow. with all that money that we spent, all that effort, we recorded every single person's microphone except Darren's. There was a yep. technical oh, malfunction right. and Darren's microphone did not record. So if you're watching, and that, hello, Kim. Hello. 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 I was just like blank face because I didn't realize that was on. I was like. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're we're talking about a very Potter, Potter senior year, our, our, uh, our last Harry Potter show. Uh, let's let's uh, move past. Let's this speed one. it up. We, yeah. um So we did the show. We kind of were thinking maybe is this the end? Is this the end of Star Kid? We we don't know. <laughs> it was. It seemed like a natural ending point. We ended the series that we started the company with. It seemed like you know it was time to say goodbye to a lot of stuff. Um, so we weren't sure, but then we kept. We, it wasn't the end. We kept going. <laughs> And uh, well, <laughs> we, we are. and we ended up then uh, doing our our first show of the next age. So that was the final show in the Halstead age, and now begins our next uh, age, which started with Twisted, the untold story of a royal vizier, which begins the stage seven seven three age. Which really twisted was not at. <laughs> we weren't including it in that age. Got um, it. So, uh, so we did twisted. Um, does anyone have any memories about twisted or anything they'd like to say about twisted? 
It was so much fun. Yeah. I, just, I love that. I think it's one of the strongest shows we've ever had in the Star Kid canon. So good. Just it's the, my music, favorite. the music, oh, the music, the lyrics, uh, the costuming. Yeah. Just, just a, what a fun I think show. The dancing's really good. Oh, I think you. that that um, that no one remembers Ahmed uh, is such a special <laughs> little number. I think it's really fun. Um, yeah, I really like those guards that uh, accompany Ahmed that are really supportive Very of him. Fun. Yeah, they yeah. love him. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. It was a great, great fun time. Anyone have any other thing? I remember anything? that uh, my hair was supposed to be like the color of Disney's Aladdin. But then the day before filming, I washed it out because I didn't know how hair dye worked. And so it just ended up being my hair color. Anyway. Yeah. Probably yeah. best for copyright reasons, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Create more distance between you and the and the, the original IP. Yeah. Didn't you have yeah. one of the original, like the voice of Jafar, who introduced the show? Jonathan Freeman, the right? We did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, that's a little backstage thing. Again, a, a piece of media that you do not hear on the YouTube. Um, we had the AJ had the same agent as Jonathan Freeman, who was the original voice of Jafar. And oh, so cool. AJ asked him to do the pre-show announcement. And so he said, okay, sure. I, I, I don't care. I'll do it. And uh, so we had the original voice of Jafar doing the pre-show announcement. And we said, we got to have him say as many funny things as we can get him to say. So what were some of the things that we said? We said, I, we had him say, if like talking about intermission and it's for, of it being a break for you to pee or poop if you have to. <laughs> so we made him say pee and poop <laughs> in Jafar's <laughs> voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that so was, was, that was fun. The Jafar voice. It, it was really fun. Um, so, you know, that one obviously inspired by our love of the Disney movies and, um, and all that. So, let's let's keep going let's, let's jump ahead so we did twisted twisted uh began a new a new age the 773 age which then continued with our summer season if you remember yeah. that so uh in 2014 we said all right twisted was was <laughs> this thing let's we're not we need to try and make more money so we yeah! said <laughs> let's um Let's do two shows at the same time because oh then people who are coming in to see the shows will now be seeing two shows instead of one show. So we'll so we'll make twice the logic as much being we would sell twice as many tickets. That's not how it worked out. But <laughs> that was the, that is that was the logic. Though. It was this is like technology was changing all of our revenue streams that we had were being shut down, so we were just making less and less money, and this was our harebrained scheme to make more. We said, we'll do twice as much work, and uh, it, yeah. it, it so, didn't work out for us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we did two shows at the same time. The first one was Annie, our Star Wars parody, yeah. uh, which, which is about um, Darth Vader going back to Tatooine for one last pod race. <laughs> And at the same time, oh there, there he is. Oh my God. Um, and at the same time we were working on that, we were talking to Jeff about I know that guy. producing his show, The yeah. Trail to Oregon. Oh, so yeah. um, this was a very important step for the company because it introduced Jeff as a songwriter, Jeff. Yeah. And songwriter Jeff. <laughs> And new so, Jeff. Um, new Jeff. New Jeff. This was also the summer yeah. of New Jeff. This yeah, was the summer yeah. of New Jeff. The summer of New yeah. Jeff. And so, so we're officially now in the Trail of Oregon, right? Well, yeah. um, yeah. Let's, Let's talk Oregon. about Can both of them really at the see? same time. So here we go. Trail to Oregon. So when we actually did the read-throughs for these two shows, if you remember, Trail to Oregon was actually not done at yeah. the read-through. We were, and, and also it should be said that Twisted We was the first show that we funded with Kickstarter. And after we did that Kickstarter, we said, Kickstarters are so hard. I never want to do it again. And uh, we uh, tried to do the summer season without doing any crowdfunding. So we were funding this by ourselves and we were 
trying to do two shows at once again we were trying to do too much probably but we had our read through and we read through trail to oregon it wasn't a hundred percent done yet and we and we kind of were like oh they were we were feeling shaky and we read the annie one and we we're like okay annie's the easy the easy hit everyone's gonna love annie and then <laughs> it then it turned out that everyone hated annie and everyone <laughs> loved trail to oregon yeah and no but, one hated annie, annie is so fucking good. Yeah, I remember great. opening night of Annie when we did. Because did we wait. do them both on the same night? Oh, wait. What were we going to say? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did we do them on the same night and we switched? Or did we? was the opening night technically two two different nights? No, we watched. Didn't we? We did our final dresses on the same night. And that's when we watched each other's show, right? For the first no, time. No, but I think the first time we saw it full through was... I remember sitting in the audience and everyone going like this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was the funny. It was the most. Yeah, but fun that ever. was the final dress, wasn't it? I, no, because I feel like we were with an audience. It's so much. I love it. Were we? Right? Yeah. This yeah. is huge. Wait. We got to settle this. This is huge. What was it? Oh, I'm I'm sorry to stop you, uh, but um, we got to keep going. And uh, another thing is, another thing is, we have to. Sorry, we have to keep going and. Another thing is, is that we're at three fifty four nine hundred, so we're still a thousand dollars away. We've made prac, we've made like very little money this stream. So <laughs> could we try to make some more money? Uh, oh my god! Um, <laughs> let's do a summer. So season let's. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh we'll yeah, you're right. Season. Let's do two. <laughs> let's do another summer season. Yeah. Wait, do you um, want to, Matt? Do you want to tease what the what the other oh, what's the after show? curse crazy we'll yeah. we'll play we will play demos that we have been working on for a show in the future it is a mystery show yeah. but you will get Ooh. a preview of something that we've been working on for decades but you don't um, get it unless we get to those goals unless we get to yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Everybody, keep going yeah yeah, yeah. so Good sorry job. to in so sorry to 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 interrupt, but we also probably have to now move on to the next show as well. Uh, oh, this was good. This was a good show. These we were good shows. Of these shows. This yes, was a the, fun right summer. <laughs> yes, we had. We ended up having a really fun summer, and I think Trail to Oregon. Um, you know, we we worked really hard on it, and I think we all had a really good time doing that show. And I Can think we... uh, it, that's actually the only show that we've ever run twice. Um, yeah. Trail to Oregon. We everybody had such a nice time doing it. It's Aww. also the smallest cast that we've ever had mm -hmm. of yeah. only six people. Mm -hmm. So wow. that show was easy to produce. So when we did when uh, in 2015 we took that show to New York, and um, whereas so again during the actual live run of the show, our our plan to do two shows at once and make twice as much money backfired on us. We did it did not pull in the numbers that we thought. There were some nights where we hit we ran Trail to Oregon where there were six we people it. in the cast. Yeah. Oh, we hit all right. Yeah, yeah. we did. It. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that so that yeah. unlocked yeah. Her, that unlocked a 4K version of Curse Crazy. And then Nick, what will we what will we show the first preview at? Um I what do this you is, think? This is a I don't know. It's a it's a pretty <laughs> No, we got pretty a big Let's 68. do 358. Let's do 358. 358. Sure. Three, okay. Um, and let's also <laughs> let's also move on to the next show because we. I think it's also important to say that that cast party after the summer season was the most fucking oh, insane night I've ever had, and I think something happened where all of us again were so tired and so relieved to be done with such an insanely busy summer that everyone lost their minds <laughs> um and we all stayed up until like six or seven in the morning it was like in I, it was insane and i just think we should say that okay. <laughs> we gotta say that we gotta say that we yeah, gotta we say that. so relieved it was a wild cast party everyone had a fun time you know 
We had a fun know. time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would have text Lauren and be like, what well, happened? Then, yeah, what happened? Yes. I know. Put it in the private chat, Lauren. Put it in the yeah, private chat. Yeah, I saw really fun pictures from that night. Yeah, it that it was why of this. Privately. Everyone was being There's silly this. and everyone, and, and it's just we stayed up really late. Everyone stayed up and watched the no, sunrise. No, we can't see it. No, this is just, no, this is just in the kitchen. <laughs> this is in the kitchen. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's fine. It's Okay, it's just, it's just, this is like Clark oh, yeah. and Pierce and- You're tapping your God phone. Damn it. We were, God damn it. Yeah, they were, they were singing all night. Everyone's yeah. just dancing. <laughs> we're just dancing and having fun. And, and everyone just watched and having a good the sunrise time. together. You know, yeah, oh, here's a night. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go sorry. ahead. Go I, have, I just, just remembered of a very, very good memory about Pierce. Pierce would love to come home and I would be so tired and I'd say, okay, Pierce, I'm going to go to bed. And he would be all cuddled in and say, Matt, I just have one more question before you go to bed. And I'd say, what's up, Pierce? And then he would ask some insanely complicated, <laughs> difficult question. He'd say, why did World War II happen? <laughs> <laughs> And I distinctly remember him asking, why did World War II happen? And I went, oh, it's a long story. It kind of starts at the end of World War I. And I, then I, ta I told him why World War II happened for three hours. And then, he, and then he went, and then he went, wow, wow. And then he asked me some other question. I said, Pierce, I got, I got to go to bed. But he had a habit. Pierce was the best at hanging out. And he would just keep you up. He's yeah, a hanger. Love him. Pierce, for those that don't know, is the other half of Talk Fine. Um, Clark, uh, Clark Backstresser, and Pierce Siebers, who wrote the music for Annie. Um, and oh, real quick, are, real quick, since you're mentioning Clark, I just want to say uh, VHS wasn't in the opening video, but I just want to shout out to VHS Christmas Carols because that's another yes. that is in the Star Kid canon. Um, it's one of my favorite shows near and dear to my heart. We got Kurt that was involved with it as well. Um, and also yes. Junea, who hasn't been on these streams, but Junea is a welcome member as well. Woohoo, Junea! Family. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just want to shout out that VHS has been one of the aw most awesome experiences of working with Star Kid and putting that show up. Hell yeah, dude. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's, a, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. It's great, great stuff. And cool. yes, and uh, so let's move on to the next show uh, real quick. Um, so the next show was Firebringer in 2016. Woo! There you go. Um, okay, let's, so Firebringer was um, we we kind of brought puppets back. We we had a, a big mammoth puppet. We had a big saber tooth tiger puppet. Firebringer was an old idea that you know we had been working on since before we moved to Chicago. We had this idea for for the people who discovered fire and all of that, and we were working on that show for a long time. We brought in. Uh, Meredith Stepien, Brian Holden to help kind of round it out. And Meredith wrote the music along with Mark Swiderski. Um, and also Julia Albain was the co-director on that show and um, starred Lauren Lopez. And, yes. you know, Woo! and there you go. We had some fun. And uh, so we did Firebringer in 2016. And then the, I feel like there was kind of a, this was the end of our stage 773 age and there was kind of an exodus from Chicago, and a lot of people came to Los Angeles. And so this began our next stage. Well, we kind of took a year off as we were trying to figure out what to do next, and we eventually landed on what is it, the Hatchetfield age, and we wait, did the guy wait, who didn't like Before we music. move on to Hatchetfield, can I just say something about Firebringer? Absolutely. The viral nature of that show, I think, was really yeah. exciting because there were people who were who were like sharing the um, I don't really want to do the work today moment. And and like some people would send that, that to me or I would just see it on like friends and things like that, um, like their their stories and stuff. And I was like, I know this friend doesn't really like understand Star Kid, but you know what I mean? Like they don't they don't understand the world, but they understand that moment and they're sharing it and like having no idea that it's like this whole fandom, this whole like creative space, you know what I mean? So it was like, yeah. it was exciting to see Star Kid like crossing over into this meme territory in a way that I hadn't seen prior to that. <laughs> like it and was you know, everywhere. No one questioned why everyone was dressed the way they were. <laughs> really nice. No one said, no one said, they just were yes-anding the moment. Why are, they looking, really, why are these people yeah. look like the Flintstones? 
it's really kind of a beautiful thing. It's kind of a beautiful thing that that clip went viral because you're like, wow, yeah, it was really a yes and moment where people were just like, yeah, absolutely, I don't want to work either, and no one was like, yeah. like a yeah. universal nope. theme that brought yeah. people together. Yeah. I think that's so wholesome, yeah. and I love Star Kid. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> that that little that two way. second clip of the show uh, became it rose out of the show, and you know. Um, and its then, yeah, screen. people didn't care to 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 say what's this from. <laughs> well, they did, they did, but I'm just saying I'm they sure. weren't. People were very accepting of it. It was just like, yeah, absolutely. They didn't need um, backstory. They just I, really Lauren, you were so good in that show. I saw yeah. that. Line. Yeah, so your, line your voice in that, in that show. show, and you and Meredith harmonizing. I love the way that your voices blend. It, it was. I love um, the duet. That big duet that you guys have was so great. Thank you. That was also Thank another you. June costume like. Yeah like success story um with yeah, just all the all the little all bones. the like mini bones and things that she like crafted and everything it was so good i got to wear a loin yeah. i got to wear a, a, a <laughs> underwear made of leaves for two hours i had the best yeah. time that was the first that was the first show i saw live um ever yeah, in life. Life. ever that was the first star kid <laughs> show i saw live uh <laughs> and learned what theater was yes. i love it star kid <laughs> That was my there first show. Um, okay, there's, special. So we're at, and we're at yeah. 356, 700, and when we get to 358, we will we will play a preview of a song from a future show. It is a show that we've been working on for uh, an age and an age. Like what? An, an age and an age. age. Yeah. It, it okay, now guy. It, let's. It, it predates all <laughs> all of all of Stark. Um, yeah. So, yes. uh, so anyway, uh, here we are. We're finally at the guy who didn't like music. Hey, you're born. Hey, you're born. We're in uh, 2018 when we uh, said, you know what? Whoa. The guy who didn't like musicals oh, this kind of uh, marks a shift in tone for Star Kid a little bit, where we said, you know, let's do some, let's kind of delve into some darker stuff and. Um, you know, Matt and I have a, 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 a real keen interest in the horror genre, and you're, we, you're we just came up with a bunch of different horror, horror show ideas, and we said, uh, we can't do this many horror things. And then we said, why not? Let's just tie them all together, put them all in the same world. We made up the three Hatchetfield shows all at the same time. Oh. No, they're not the same one. And here we go. Paul. Oh, all hey, right. Paul. Well, Hello. you know hey, what, guys? Paul? We were just hey. starting to talk about the guy who didn't like musicals, and this is your first Star Kid show. Amazing. Do you have any, yes. Do you have any uh, memories about the guy who didn't like <clears throat> musicals and your and what the process was like? Oh my God, so many. Um, yeah, at the time, I think so Mariah and I were living together, <laughs> and she had just done a show with Dylan. I think it was, right? Uh, yeah. I was in it. Jeff was in it too. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff was in it too. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Jeff, was, yeah, Jeff yeah. was in it too. Yeah, sorry. With, um, with Matt Mayhan and Jamie Lynn Beatty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, wow. No. That was such a while ago. Um, yeah, and then uh, I think <laughs> I Mariah had signed on to do The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals first, and then she had mentioned that you know, you were looking for a stage manager and she was kind of like, oh, I happen to live with one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and My yeah, I remember I was kind of like on the fence about stage management in general. And like, I think I was just going from show to show, like freelancing, just really burned out. So when Mariah had talked to me about it at first, I was kind of like, uh, maybe like right now I'm like kind of burnt, um, but met with Nick. Uh, one day and had some lunch and I remember walking away from that meeting going like just thinking wow this actually sounds like a lot of fun and I hope I get to do it now did it rekindle uh, your love for stage management yeah what happened there yeah I mean it's in it's interesting like stepping into a space like Starkid because like you know one of the first things I try and do when I go into a show is establish like the dynamic between everyone and I hadn't really, at that point in my career, stepped into a dynamic of folks who really talking to together. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no, I've just worked together for so long. So it was just kind of like 
figuring everything out and along the way nick kept asking paul are you having fun that was like the <laughs> one thing that resonated it was like nick was always like about the fun and the joy and yeah so who did this <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, just we hit the uh, by the way, we hit we hit the goal. Okay, so, great. Awesome. So I'm going to uh, pause background music. A little bit of precursor as we go into listening to uh, this demo. So this is a demo, a, a short song demo for a uh, a show that we've been uh, developing for many years. Uh, this is uh, Matt and I's pirate idea um and so this is uh we don't really want to really even say what the show would be called right now this is an idea that we've been um making up forever this is like our big idea and this is um the the title of the show is not the title of the song just so you know and um also keep in mind that this show would not happen for several years um and uh and, and anything could change. We've been trying to develop this as, as an animated series for many years and Ooh, doing this with it, doing that with it. And, um, but you know, what we have, uh, you know, we were very fortunate to have Star Kid. So that, you know, it's looking like it may end up, you know, we're, it might work out to that we do the show as a, as a Star Kid show. Matt, do you have anything to say about, about the song? Uh, no, not really. Uh, we could just, <laughs> I guess we could just, we could just play it. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, this thing's been in development. Jeff's been working on the music. So, so this will just give you a, an idea of how long these things kind of. And this are, would are be for on. the Star Kid future. So we're looking back at the 15 years, looking ahead. This would not happen for several years, but here we go. Was a wretched by his nanny shipped out to sea. And he learned to lift his sword and his ale in the middle of the briny deep. And he had the end of the day, before he grew up to be me. Say, yo, 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 so wretched life for me. So wretched life for you, I try. So wretched life we live. Never headed far, the dreaded north was held in poverty. When a dog is for crap, a dread, it toils around your ship. All right, so um, song Born to be Wretched. Uh, for an upcoming possible uh, Star Kid future show. Um, and so we actually have another uh, demo from that show that we uh, can unlock as well. Um, what what do we want to set the... Um, set for gold! Set for 325, whatever. 325. 375. You don't know number. Gold! 375. Isn't that really far away? Yeah. That's really far away. Oh. <laughs> How about 361? 361? I like that. 361? Yeah, sure. 360. 360. How about 360? Let's do 363. Let's split the difference. Let's do 363. Okay. Okay. 363. And this is a, and this is okay. the song of uh, my favorite character that I've ever written. So oh. there you go. Hey, that's um, really exciting. Um, Rich Gaze, yeah. please give. Can I just say um, really quick something? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I uh just about the guideline musicals. It was my first experience work. Well, actually, my second experience working with Star Kid, kind of. But it was everyone was so. Wait, what was your first? Well, I did the. It wasn't the summer a, season. It was the I did like a pre. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A, Practice like a tiny play before one of the Firebringers, but. Uh, which was really one of the, it was extremely funny, but everyone was so warm and welcoming and fun. And like, it was just, they took the pressure off and it was great. 
everyone was so great to work with right from the get go. That's beautiful. Why did you look at me? It's wild. Yeah. Wild. You are like Mariah right away because she liked yeah. uh, video yes. games. And then, and then Mariah, the guy who didn't like musicals, was your first show as well. What was your experience like? Well, that was the day I was born, and then I got to do the play. And uh, I was actually, to be honest, I was really scared. I was like, everybody is cooler than me and all friends and really funny and great. Mm -hmm. And I was 22 and, like, <laughs> didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I feel like I really learned a lot as a performer and uh, being with a community of people. And it's just been really cool to like grow as a performer with everybody else and be alive. <laughs> That's my story, guys. Thank you for listening. And I also throw in, I, I have to give a big thank you to Lauren for helping me out during Guy because I had a terrible schedule and had to choreograph about 75% of the show in like two weeks. And then I had to go work on something else. So Lauren definitely came in and she, like she was the one that did show stopping number, you know, she finessed like a lot of the, the rough edges of the show that made it so good. So thank you, Lauren, for helping me out and making the Stop show. It. Oh, thank can you. I have a that with you guys, cup of roasted coffee. I was so nervous to learn that dance. Cause I, at the time, like just looking at my body dancing, I would cry. And it was so fun doing that with you guys and Jamie. And I was like, wait, Maybe dancing can be a fun thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still one of my favorite theater dancing experiences mm -hmm. was that. Yes. That was fun. Yeah. That was a fun show. It was fun to, it was, you know, um, it was fun being in a musical where you didn't have to sing a lot of the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I relate. It was fun to go through most of the musical oh and be like, oh, I'm like, it's like, oh, it's basically just Jeff and Mariah and Robert just doing all the songs and we were just, uh, well, most of us were just kind of being scared. It was exciting. <laughs> I never even thought of it like that. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it was um, nuts. Yeah, it was, I, I think it was a really good idea, um, which is why when we came up with it, we did it first of, of all the Hatchetfield ones. Um, and I think Jeff just, you captured exactly the right tone with all the songs. I think that it was, um, it was like the right amount of insane and wacky and, um, but also scary at the same time. Okay. I think that the, it, it was certainly also an, uh, an acting challenge as well. And a challenge for all of us, because there are certain scenes where, again, it was kind of a shift in tone for the, for the company where, Prior to this, we had basically a joke, joke, joke every couple seconds. And the hatchet field ones are kind of where we start to say, we can just have a genuine scene where two people and just um, talking to each other and not doing, um, not like in such a joking fashion. Like that scene where Paul and Emma are sitting together and they kind of have that whole a bit where Emma is doing the monologue about her, about Jane, her sister who died and why she came back to Hatchetfield. And I think it was really, um, it was a wonderful experience and a, and a, and a growing experience of going like, okay, we can, we can get a little bit more serious with some of these things and we can, um, and we oh. in our own abilities a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Go. Well, like a good, like I feel like, I feel like the end of the show, I also think Guy has the best end of any show out Ever. of all the shows with the oh. inevitable as well as into like the, the them killing Emma. Um, just because it's like, it's a, it's a good example of like, this is very funny, but it's also very dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Like, yeah. Having having Lauren scream through that scream. Scream. that was awesome. Just be dragged around stage was so, so sad, and so sad, so sad and funny. But it's like a nice like this is a this is great. It's so it's so it's so dark and wonderful. I love that, but not a typical. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a usual ending we got. Yes, right. It was yeah. It was a. It, it's interesting now because people uh, will nowadays when we'll talk about Star Kid, they'll go, "Oh, it's Star Kid," so I know it's going to be twisted, or I know it's going to end badly. 
But when we did the guy who didn't like musicals, we would get feedback after the show where people would say, this didn't feel like a star kid show to me. Um, because it ended in, in like this horrible way where Emma is dragged off stage screaming for help, um, and is dragged to her doom. And so I think that it was, you know, it was the first one where we, where we were going like, okay, it's not going to be everybody's, uh, all, it's not about friends and, and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, Matt. And it's not about tying up loose ends. It's, it's definitely, you know, yeah. creative and it, it opens the door up to like the whole Hatcherfield universe, which I thought was really exciting. And then also characters are coming back and then dying again. You know what I mean? There's timelines, there's, there's complexity, um, which I thought was really cool to establish that and then keep running with it. Y'all kept going and going and going and you never really know what to expect in Hatcherfield, which I really love. Well, Zoe McAndless in the chat asked, Lauren, did anyone ever let you use their phone? And didn't we like bring the yeah. phone yeah. backstage often? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One, one time we had someone's phone. I was like, yeah. But yeah, wait, we why, did, but why did we get their phone? Because I was like, can you call call 911? I was like, oh, yeah. Right. And then uh, that was bleak. There were like, there would be people, like someone gave me their phone and it was locked. And I was like, what's the passcode? <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we would take their phone backstage and take selfies of like everyone. Like, yeah. Lauren, how was that number for you? How was that like for you doing it? So fun. Yeah. Because also that song, Jeff, is so good. Yeah. Um, it's so like, fucking good. That's one of that might be one of my favorite Jeff songs. And so there was like it was such a fun number to do because I just got to like scream and run around and react. I just got to react yeah. to what you guys were doing. But then it was also like, there was a little actor part of me too that was like, oh my God, this number is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love so that. it was great. I loved that ending. It's so God. fun. Can we do the show again? Can we do that one again? Well, we're doing you know all three in rap. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll, uh we'll see. See, we'll see. Um, guy guy we'll see. is is another kind of small cast, uh easy show to perform. So we'll see what happens with it. Okay, um, so we're into our last 19 minutes, so we'll probably move on to Black Friday. And just a reminder, we're trying to hit 363 and then we will play another demo this one's a longer demo for a future show and it's matt's favorite song very important it's well, a song not, by his I, it's a great character. song it is a great song <laughs> i yeah i have a personal affinity for this one character just because i've been working on this story for so long so uh we're gonna move on to black friday now yeah, wow. it's down in the corner of the screen. So, oh, um, nice. There it here is. Here we go. We're on to Black Friday. Black Friday Ooh. was a was a. Oh, Joey. Um, I'm on the middle. Oh, that's a cool. Um, I'm in the middle. <laughs> so this was this was a big show for the um for the Hatchetfield series because again it was the first one that said okay it's going to be a series now because guy who didn't like musicals is really so standalone and then Black Friday comes in to go like okay this is a larger world. It introduces Wiggly and things like that. And um, I, I'd say it's probably the saddest show that we've ever done. Um, the most somber uh, where we have just, again, we were, we were, we were really tickled by the idea of, Oh, the scenes don't have to be funny all the time. So mm -hmm. we um, wrote some nice scenes with, with uh, this was Kim Whalen's first show. Um, and oh, also yeah. Hertz for a show. Yeah. And uh, Kim came in to be Becky Barnes and, 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 and President and Howard Joe. Goodman. Um, oh, yeah. And James as well. And James, James it was yeah. your first show oh, acting. Yeah. I didn't know that was the first you acted. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, wow. Any, any memories about Black Friday? Um, Half the cast being <laughs> deathly ill? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that was a challenge. That was a challenge. Starting COVID, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. was everyone during the show. I think, I think, oh, 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 no, 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 keep it in. Except that was vomit. My biggest this is the first show I saw in person, the first Star Kid show that I saw live. Oh, oh wow. nice. Wow. We probably saw you, Bryce, afterwards. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. we were all, yeah, I, I stayed behind. Um, I think that's when I met you, Kim, because I absolutely 
fell in love. Uh, your voice just, it blew me away. Seriously, and then you also have like that really earnest, like long monologue about like escaping um, your ex-husband and like, I mean, and, and killing, you know, all just all of it. There was so much happening in that monologue. And I was like, wow, this really is very serious. You, yeah, Nick so much. Nash really wrote some tragic characters. Well, not tragic, but just like some, they, yeah, they go through some tragic, yeah, in, a lot, this, lot of trauma. In this one, and yeah. it was, um, I thought, being this is like my first show with Starkid, I was like, this is so great. I love that we can take something like you guys were talking about earlier, be like very serious with it and and talk about a serious topic. And then in the next scene, it'd be like absolutely hilarious and to lighten mm. it up a little bit. Mm. It, it, it kind of makes oh, it more palatable and it makes it more like life because we're not always at the one basis. So and just working with everybody was a dream. Because I got, I got to know some of these people before. I'm just like, mm. No, no, it's okay. Kurt, Kurt, go, go, Kurt? go. Yeah. Oh, what you're saying, Kurt? No, 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 I was saying, Kurt. You guys are in this play. My big takeaway was that I was, I'm so, I did a bunch of musicals with like, you know, around theaters and stuff. And aside from like doing spies, um, like, it's so cool doing a show with these groups because Nick, like, and Matt, you take every small character so seriously. And that was like really surprising to me where I'd be like, all right, so, you know, I'm on fumble in this moment. And you were like, no, no, no. This guy, there's an entire, it's like you infuse such like intention and like everything. Like so you never, you never feel like when you're on stage, there's a yes. wasted moment. And I feel like that's a really special yeah. thing that like- That's a gift. And then it's an in 10 cam, like, I just feel like we get the chance to, even when we're playing smaller parts, it's like, no, but I know exactly who I am and what I'm doing. And that was a really new sensation, honestly. And I just, I, I had so much fun with Black Friday because even the, the parts that were like, Maybe the most fun I had was playing like, you know, shopper number four or something. Yeah. So I just, I love that nothing, nothing feels wasted or uh, uh, like an afterthought. Everything feels super intentional. I, I love that. <laughs> From an audience standpoint, it really, really makes a difference. I remember just like anywhere I would look on stage, there was so much specificity and like, it just really, um, one, especially in that space too, it was a really like small, tight space. I feel like you guys made use of the space really well. The direction was really, really smart and you feel so immersed. And then when you see everyone making really interesting choices everywhere you look, it was really exciting just to be fully thrown into the world of Hatch and Field in that show. Um, one memory I particularly have of talking about immersion was getting the apple. Oh, you got the apple? Uh oh, <laughs> sorry about that, Bryce. Did you get no, the apple? <laughs> Bryce, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I held on to it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Because also, I remember Nick sat me there for, he was like, interesting things happen here. So this will be a fun seat. And I was like, okay, interesting thanks. Interesting things happen here. And this then seat you, is I remember spooky. seeing you see me, Joey. I remember seeing you like specifically see me. And then uh, I got the apple and I was like, oh, okay. So that's what this whole thing was about. And people were looking at me, like fans were looking at me like, and I was like, do you want, yeah, I, I remember giving it to someone um, after the show and they were really excited about it. So whoever also, ended up with the Apple, show with Jeff played Tom. Oh yeah. That was insane. Yeah. What an insane, yeah. insane yeah. show. Yeah. 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 That was a hell of a time. And, <laughs> and yeah. Dylan's parts. Incredible. Yeah, so this was, yeah, the, there were a, f a few yeah. things. First off, yeah. this was Angela Giratana's first show oh, yeah. and yeah. Kendall, um, Nicole Yakshi was Kendall. also in the show. The youngest uh, star kid actor that there is. Um, she she was, I think, 13 when we started the process. She turned 14 during the show. And um, when we were doing the show, we were like, ah, should we really have a kid? We we weren't sure if if we should wanted we really to work with somebody that young. And then uh, Kendall auditioned and she sang and we're like, oh, they're her. That we can do it. And she and she closes the whole show and she does such an amazing job. And um, and I also uh, I'm so happy that Angela was in the show, you know, that we actually originally Mariah was going to be Lex. And um, and then I Mariah agree. got into Mean Girls, and then <laughs> we said, and we said, oh, okay. But Mariah, <laughs> you were, oh, similar we, phone call with Darren. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we were. I I was so happy for you. I I also want to clarify. I was happy for Darren. I was, <laughs> I was just in a bad mood at the time <laughs> because we needed those songs. 
Um, but uh, Mariah, uh, Mariah called me in the in the best possible way and said, "I'm so sorry. I actually can't do the show. I'm I'm doing Mean Girls and all this." And I said, "Please, please go do that. Go do something." It it, it was a big deal, and I'm very proud of you for going and doing it. And um, it was meant to be because yeah. then we got Angela and, and got Angela. I got a best friend. But oh, also, no. also Will. Good. Also Will. We got Will for <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. Will was by itself. Really? Yes. yes. Right. yes. Oh, yeah. we're yeah. skipping ahead. Sorry. Um, the more deep of the yeah. Movie. And uh, yes, what what was I going to say about, about the whole thing? Yes, we met Angela because yeah. Angela was in an improv class with Jamie Lynn Beatty. And Jamie said, and Jamie said, oh, if we're looking for somebody... How about this? How about this person, Angela? And then Angela auditioned, and I and she was fantastic. Um, so I felt very lucky, very happy about that whole thing. That was a, a wild process for me because I was also working on a show for Quibi, uh, with Darren called Royalties oh, yeah. at the same time. So I would wake up at 5 a.m. and go and uh shoot, um for that show or go and edit for that show and then go to black friday rehearsal at night so i would be working from like 5 a.m to 11 p.m it was uh it was a busy busy time um but uh so we're, we're into the final 10 minutes so we can move on to nerdy prudes but just a reminder we're now at 360 we wanted to get to 363 Three. And then we will play a demo from a future show. So, uh, a just a little under, just a little under three thousand um, dollars. Not, not yeah. that far away. Um, so, uh, so here we go. So we did Black Friday. Then, of course, the pandemic hit. It was the biggest. It was such an enormous uh, a, a hurdle. Um, we couldn't do theater. Um, for a long time. Um, in the meantime, we did do Nightmare Time, and we and also this is when VHS Christmas Carol uh, happened. The first iteration happened, and yes, I'm sorry that it is not include it was not included in the opening thing. I was mainly put, including in the opening thing the full length musicals that are on YouTube. Right. So um, so that's why it, it wasn't in there. Um, but it is a full length musical uh, now. A, a second act has now been written to it, and you did it last year. But um, but it has not been released on YouTube. So um, so anyway, oh look who look who we have. I think I know. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. I can take it's off so vocal rest. No, she's I, simply I was legit just watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> great. I've been uh, watching as a fan, and I was like, I should join. <laughs> Wait, um, Angela, this timing is great because I wanted to shout out Angela from Black Friday to Nerdy Proves, the acting range, like to play Lex and I, then Grace. I came in the same universe. <laughs> no, seriously, I wanted I just I wanted to shout that out because it's just it, it blows my mind because Lex is such a, a grounded like edgy character and Grace is just like unhinged. Um and I love the juxtaposition. I thought I just okay, really great. always I can say that about I just heard that you yeah. had the that you had the apple. I did. I didn't I know did that get the part. apple that night. It, it was an, no, it was an, it's an exciting memory. Yeah. <laughs> Angela, I yes and that, but also Lauren. Your range from Linda to yes. uh, oh, Ruth as well. Yeah. Both of them are Linda. Linda to Ruth is truly a. Linda to Ruth. Linda Ruth. I've they could be a family. Range. We got in. We haven't even thought of it because it's so insane. Goes, like, it's, it's, weird to think of, it's weird to think of them as like mother, older daughter, younger daughter. As uh, <laughs> like, what, what, what is that family look sure. like? Or what? those two, those two women came out of you. Like, <laughs> yeah, but they live no, right there. there. <laughs> um, yes, I. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something really quick about Black Friday. Oh, Angela, do you remember this one night during Black Friday before we talk about Nerdy Broods where um, remember the scene where you come on with Jamie and Jamie is Sherman and you're supposed to have a gun 
in your pocket and <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that you couldn't find oh, the gun <laughs> what did she do can you tell you us about that kill i think i did this right <laughs> you killed sherman with your fingers yeah, yeah. with the worst <laughs> improv gun killed of all sherman time. with the fingers but what I was the best it about like it that. was what was the the mic was, was the best was that it was because Paul brought up the lights as you were entering. So Paul didn't really know if you were ready or not. Um, so it, yeah. so during that scene, the lights came up. It was maybe 30 seconds of silence with a it was really so mirror stage, the lights up. And then I just heard Did Angela. You, going, back? you ran back. Uh, yes. Angela. Yes. And I heard Angela whispering and she went, I can't find the gun. I can't find it. I'm just and it was like going through the house speakers, and, and, and you could hear yeah. it in the house. That was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Guys, I think our prop table has too much stuff on it. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find the gun. Oh my god! I will never forget that, Nick. I remember. Oh, I forgot that I went back to get it. Yeah, and it wasn't there. And then yes. I remember looking at Jamie and going, oh, no, no. "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> you got to snap Sherman's neck. Yes, because like, also, because also, Jamie is supposed to lead you on stage with a with a box cutter, and it, what ended up happening is that you came on from the opposite end as 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 Sherman. So Sherman entered, and then and then Lex met Sherman. In you the willingly, oh, you were willingly, willingly uh, met Sherman there. I was willingly ready about. to go, and Jamie Lynn looked at me like like in full Sherman. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's not Jamie uh, Lynn, that was Sherman looking at you. So, <laughs> just pull Sherman out. And then do I, I need just to did switch that. my backdrops or Yeah, uh, no no no. We're going to talk sorry. about nerdy friends now. Fun. So sorry. <laughs> um, so, here we are. I was in we're, another spot. We're about $1500 away from that next uh from that next um demo. demo. So if you want to yeah. hear that demo, we've got 4 minutes. We're fifteen hundred dollars away. Can can we do it? Um, and and in the meantime, let's talk about Nerdy, Nerdy Prudes Must Die. Any memories about Nerdy Prudes? Yes, John. So much. Fun. I was going to say we will only be able to blow out the candles of the cake that I made if we hit. <laughs> also, if we don't hit the goal, the song disappears for us. The song it doesn't it's exist. It's it's gone. Wow. The stakes are high. The song does might as well be away. Acme versus twenty years of Wiley Coyote. Yeah. <laughs> All that work gone. What'd you say? <laughs> my, song, yeah. uh, my big yeah. memory was that it was just amazing to be in a room with people and doing a show. It was like, because I think we did, you know, we we were gone for four years and it just felt like, I don't know, I'm, I'll never take it for granted getting to yeah. do, getting to do a show with friends yeah. again, and it felt like so that. Cool. It felt like a rekindling of. It that. felt like as soon as everybody entered the room for the first rehearsal, everyone was like, "Oh, at least me." I, I felt like everyone was like, "Oh, we're so grateful to be here. Yeah. We're so grateful to be doing the show and to be memorizing lines and to we be didn't doing a show again. live." Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. the energy was really open and warm yeah. from day one, and it was great. Yeah. This was yeah. my first great um, Star Kid musical. My yeah. first stage. Yeah. 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 I had like a soft I'm launch. Stage with uh, Nightmare Time, Nightmare so, Time. Mm -hmm. which, you know, was, I think for me helpful so that being in the same space with everyone, I wasn't like too intimidated or like nervous because I'd, I've already acted and interacted with everybody, but um, it was still kind of like wild and surreal and really fun. Bryce, it was so fun. It was so fun to have you, one of the younger people in the room, playing the adult who was so. <laughs> yeah. Playing the authority figure. Who was like, shut up. Right. Right. <laughs> it felt right. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. That and Broadway's one. Will Branner. Broadway's Will Branner was with us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Broadway's Will Branner. So yes. fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Comes in, it was really fun rides. casting Will. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Mariah, what'd you say? No, that's it. It was just, he came in memorized and wailed his face off, and we were all like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he came in that's choice so of in. Yeah. We were ready. He was ready. It also, just felt, it also just felt like cosmically nice that he was, a, he's a Michigan grad too, yeah. you know? It was that nice thing yeah. to like tie it all together 
you know, if we're talking about a uh, full circle 15 years, you're like, oh my God, amazing. Like oh, you, yeah. and was there, he was there. Apparently the party we had after the five year anniversary Star Kid show was at Will's house. Yeah. And we didn't realize yeah, oh, this. Wow. That Will what? was there. We yeah, we had met you. we had met him what? Uh, uh, many many years prior, but we did not remember. Uh, we went back to University of Michigan to do a reunion uh, concert called a very Star Kid reunion. That was our five year anniversary, and um, we and the theater kids at the time invited us to a party at their house. That is the house that a lot of uh, our people used to live in. Yeah, and. Um, I am aghast so at this. We went and Will apparently was there. I have no memory of Will being yeah. there, but no. he was there. Yeah. Um, they had um, pictures, look in the back. a little baby. What, yep. Jay? Yeah. They had a moldy fridge. I remember opening it. They did it. have a moldy oh. fridge. Um, it, it I was, opened the fridge yeah. and I said, it looks was, like a Dalmatian yes. in there. Uh, going oh, back, no. into, the, oh, going no. back oh. into the house was terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, it, it was it, so... Is it oh, you go first. Joey. No, please, please. It's I, we're That's probably going to six hundred to go, guys. Six hundred. I think to go. we are, might we might say the same thing. And that the floor. Do you remember how the floor yeah. felt? It was made of beer. Yes. It was made <laughs> of a oh sludgy God. beer. Like yeah. like the yeah, carpet was it. completely soaked in beer, and the wood had somehow turned to sludge. And I said, "These fucking people ruined my favorite party house." Oh. <laughs> oh. And it yeah, is just yeah. like it is shocking to think that. We all kind of lived in that. <laughs> yeah, Wait, yeah. In some way or another, we all lived. We're hey, doing a cake moment. I have you guys blow this out real quick. We got to hit our goal, oh, right? Here we go. All right, it's all, right. all right, all right, all right. Real quick, out. What kind of cake is that? Are we singing? Right. Sure. Yes. What are we singing? Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Oh, look at all the bubs. Look at all what kind of cake is that, John? John, what kind yeah, of cake what is, is that? Cake? That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I can only tell that end. It was their 15th birthday. Look at these yeah, little puppies. Look at all these great yeah, dogs. We, we had, no, 200 yeah. more. 200, 200 more dogs. We looked at the cheat sheet. 200 more. Goodbye, oh, Lauren. Thank you so much for supporting us. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, bye. You got to do more. So I, I think that we can. I think we can do this. I think we can. Yeah, let's do it. So, oh. Wasn't there a birthday during Nerdy Prudes? And then there was like the whole thing with the candles, and we were like, okay, COVID, though, COVID. Nick's and then birthday. I had, and then whoever, oh, Nick, and then I gave you my fan to to yes. fan out the candles. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that was fun. That was cute. Oh, Everyone wow. watching, donate four dollars and twenty cents, and we'll make our goal. Four dollars twenty cents, blaze it! Blaze it! Let's do it. What? Um, yeah, everyone we're, we're give four dollars. We're going a little over. We're going a little over, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going over. I thought. I thought today was Friday. We're going over. <laughs> we're going over. Get them one second. Oh, right. Been there, Angela. Been there. I could oh, not God. believe it. And then I was like, Oh, they're alive. Yeah. Kim, we, um, we lost Kim. Like a whole we, lost Kim. Kim. we lost Please Kim. Donate. We lost her. Please. All right. Um. So. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hey. Say hi. Hey. Uh. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Put it in the chat. Club thing. Right now. Up to their pledge. Mm. We're loving it. Yeah. And are you gonna play the song at the end? Like uh, that's the that's to send the us out. Yes. We'll, uh, we'll, play, we'll play the song. Then we'll say goodbye. Then we'll, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll leave. Then we'll if, we, if we hit it, if we hit it. Oh, 80. Oh, wait, yeah, 60, anybody almost 50. to play us out? To play oh. us out. Oh, we're getting less there. than $40. Less than $40. Please. Less than 40 or less than? Less oh. than 40. $38. $38. $38. It's not up to <laughs> 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 Any other last yeah. minute memories about Nerdy Prudes Must Die? Uh, I just remember um, it, was, it was great. Floods and oh, power outage. 
I would wake up. Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. just want to mention that this was the it. first show. There you go. All right. This nice. was the oh, first show yeah. that we had we understudies. So I also oh, want to yeah. uh, talk about uh, Virginia and and yes. 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 No, this is important. Virginia yes. Davis. Um, yes. Virginia, yes. Davis. Yes. Virginia oh, and Davis, who were fantastic yeah. and they're actually in the they're in the youtube version yeah. as well so that's fun a lot of people are in are also in the youtube version james, james you're in the youtube james. version jeff's yeah, in the youtube I version bit, yeah. Yeah. dylan mm -hmm. dylan's in there yeah. all right so there we go nerdy fruits must die we had so much fun doing that show and we were safe and we had a good time all right. It was one so, of the best times of my life, and I think about those months all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I daydream about those years. <laughs> um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna play one more um, uh, demo song demo from a uh, possible upcoming Star Kid show, uh, and there's not really too much to say. Um, just again. This is something that would happen years from now, and you know things can always change. Who knows? Maybe we will make it into an animated show if some studio sees this and says, "You know what? Let's do it." Um, so we, we, it'll be canceled as a Star Trek show if that happens. But um, but <laughs> we'll if that. it doesn't happen, then uh, we'll then we'll see. But let's play the next song demo. It is uh, here. You go. For being so frigid, I in near new land so soft for being so hard. I ne'er trade sand for the ice if it's gold you are digging. So close yet so far, so small yet so large. For the waves have the rule, have the rule, have the rule through my life. And the whales had a call, had a call, had a call me home. They draw me out and not a call. I come back with belly full of good whale meat as the darks of trout smear coal inside of me. I want me grifters so honest in all of their griffins. By the book, take the line. I bet if you lay on the docks, the parlay is, is good. We are dead, blood and sweat. I arrived in the realm where oblivion is more than religion. It's understood as oblivion should. Oh, the ways of they roll, how they roll. Yeah, that is yeah. a great song. I was sitting here going, Good yeah, whale meat. Good whale meat. Yeah. yeah so. The docks of Trout Spear. So was um, maybe in a few that. years we'll we'll find out exactly what that what that's all about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But we thought we'd give everyone a little a little taste, a little tease. Uh, to let you know that, you know, we've got more things. We're always working on uh, many things at once. Um, you know, plans change. Sometimes you you move the order of the shows around. Um, but, uh, you know, this, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to do this show that we're doing this summer, Cinderella's Castle. Thank you all so much for contributing to the campaign. Yes, thank you so much. And, um, and making this this will be the highest funded single star kid production ever 
Um, so, thank you. Uh, thank you so thank much. you so much. Uh, you're making this it, it possible for this to be the best production that it can possibly be. So thank you for your continued support. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for everything. And thanks for keep coming back and Thank you for the past 15 years, and uh, here's looking forward to the next 15 years. I also wanted to shout out um, uh, Jay Hughes, who was also in Nerdy hey! Prince as well. Um, don't, didn't okay. want to forget them. Um, so, uh, so thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all so much for watching, and um, I and I think uh, we've got another stream next week. That is the Hatchet Field stream, a pit stop in Hatchet Field where we're going to, I think, do our death match part two. Um, and uh, we're going to. We want to say the gimmick of that one. Yes. Of that death match. Yeah. This is, it's, uh, gonna be it's a tag team death match. So oh! Rather, oh. rather than individuals fighting, we're going to see pairs fighting. Wow. Uh, that crazy. is crazy. It's all for the Hatchetfield video game. I'm telling oh you. My yes. <laughs> I, I'd love to do a video <laughs> game. Um, uh, so uh, we've got that, and we're going to have, um, uh, you know, a, a big, a big unlockable with with that stream. So um, tune in next week, and then, and we've got. Uh, so we've got that week, and then we've got another week. We've got two more weeks left in the campaign. We're already at three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. Let's see how much uh, how much further we can go. Thank you all so much, and um, I hope you all have a great, wonderful day. Thank I love you all. You so guys. Much. Thank you all so much for, for thank you. Happy fifteen. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play that game for you.